What is worse? You growing up with a mother that everyone in your town know is a thought. <laughs> or you're raising a daughter that everyone in the city, town, and state know is a thought. I'm going I'm, I'm going to let my mom have this one. <laughs> She she too old and grown for this one. My daughter died. I'm talking about you growing up too as a kid. You growing up as a kid. All the boys in the school in high school know your mama they is a thot. They can have that one. They can have that one. It ain't what it is. It ain't what it is. Having a daughter that yeah. is a thot is a man's worst nightmare. Yeah. Like you talk, like you love your mama to death. <laughs> but I will accept that. Yes. But I didn't have nothing to do with raising a thot. <laughs> Like, yo, having yeah. a daughter that's yeah. like that is, woo! Yeah, it, yeah, they hit something. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. The Highest Point Podcast. More than the pod, it's a lifestyle. lifestyle, style. Yo, 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 welcome to The Highest Point Podcast. This is a podcast for everyone, no matter where you're from, no matter what you've been through, you know you deserve the best and willing to put in the work for progress to reach the highest point. Now, speaking about reaching the highest point, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest in the building. I'm talking about this man is a life coach. He's a visionary. He's a striving voice of the voiceless. I'm talking about the man, the host of the new podcast, Black Man Speaks. Mr. Jonathan in the building, man. What's happening with you? What's up? What's up? Let's go. We in here. Let's go. We in here. We in the booth, baby. Yes, Let's sir. go. Yes, Let's sir. Go. We definitely in the booth, man. Going to yes, have sir. a good time today. Yes. And, um, you know, one thing on this show, though, we like to focus in on the journey of our guests. Mm. A lot of times people just see the end result and have no idea about, you know, how you got to the point you are today. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, we want to focus in on that. And uh, so can you tell the guests a little bit about, uh, can you tell our audience a little bit about, you know, where you're from and what was your family dynamics growing up? Um, I'm, re- I'm originally from a small town, um, New Bern, like Eastern North Carolina, I'm like more of Kenston area, Greenville, like, you know, the small pockets of towns and where I came from, it was it was a lot trying to get out of there, trying to mm. do something big, do something great, because you have these small minded mindsets. But sometimes you just gotta pull through and just get through it, man. Like yeah. I'm, I'm just in a place like just trying to be the best version of me, man. Like that's just that's where I'm at. Like yeah. and, and people just sometimes you just gotta move. You just gotta move. Right. You just gotta move. No matter what it looks like, no matter what people say about you, you just gotta. It's yeah. got to move. Yeah, really. absolutely. Yeah. So when you say you got to move and, you know, everyone has experienced those who have, you know, small minded mindsets. And we may have even had a small mind ourselves before. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you had that small mind at one point and then what maybe changed to help you expand your mind if you ever felt you were in that situation? Yeah, I mean, when in the beginning I started off like, okay, I wanted this, I wanted that. And then, too, it depends on your family dynamic Mm -hmm. because that affects the way you move and how you change and how you grow. Because from the beginning, like, I know for me, I was in the church all the time. We just was in this, sometimes be in this little box, Mm -hmm. mindset. Then once I started reading and started, like, going to other countries, just traveling, it expanded my mind and growth. So Mm -hmm. then after that, I was like, mm, there's something different. And the first time I ever had a, my first growth mindset was when I was in middle, it was either middle school or high school. We went to on a cruise. Mm. It changed my mind. I saw different people, talking to them, dealing with them, um, asking questions. I mean, we had people from New York, right? a little bit of everywhere. And I was yeah. like, yo, like their mindset different. And I was like, yo, that, I, I, I like that. I like yeah, that. definitely, definitely. And I think that's what's uh, very important because we love our small towns where we come from. That's our foundation. Yeah, yeah. It help us have the morals and things that we have. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times traveling, seeing other things, it help you realize, okay, yeah, I love what I'm from. I love where I'm from, but it's so much more out yeah, here. Yeah. And that exposure can yeah. be the difference and can just really make our, our minds expand. And I think that's very important. Uh, I come from a small town as well. Uh, something that helped me when I was growing up, when my sister went to the Air Force, she would always, you know, bring us to the base they were, like uh-huh. all over the country, different places. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, I'm seeing these different areas, doing these different things. She's introducing us to stuff. I'm like, okay, it's much more out here. Yeah. So I was more, uh, so 
more, I can't say program, but I was just more so interested in other things. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, okay, I love where I'm from, but I want to go out. I love these other things too. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's I think that's important. It's some, something I want the, the guests to hear as well. Like, yo, uh, you know, even if you don't have those means to travel, like, Work on getting there so yeah. you can be able to get, yeah. you know, see those things. You know what I'm, I'm saying? T- I'm going to tell you a thing that helped me, too. I know this might be weird. Even though I did, even though the small towns, Kentston, Rocky Mount, yeah. Greenville, Gro- Goldsboro, Charlotte, even you just going to a hotel mm-hmm. and sitting in there, it still feel like you're somewhere else. Right. That's true. It, you might not, you might not, you can go, even if you went out to eat, it just did simple stuff, it feels like you're somewhere else. It's just, yeah. the, it's just the vibe. It's just the feel. Like, I literally would go off the off season and go to like Myrtle Beach or something. Nobody there or nothing. It just feel like I'm just somewhere else. Yeah. I feel like I'm in Miami somewhere. And I, I'm like, it's just it's, the mindset. It's different. Just, yeah. it's, that's like a staycation. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, you just travel outside of your regular community. Just Post up in a hotel like you are saying, it's, yeah. it just opens up the room to have a different type of thought yeah. process. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just breaking away. That's mm-hmm. that's the main thing. That's like even if you thing. can't yeah. go far, just break away from yeah. the norm yeah. so you can allow some new to seek into your brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's yeah. real talk. Real talk. Um, real talk. So I know you got this coaching business as well. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how did it start and what's the services that you provide? Um, how it started was me going through my process of, of relationships, like up and down, in and out. You, Cause you know, most time you go through pain points and different things, but this time I was on this circle of relationships going in and out. And I'm like, yo, I had to, I was like, Lord, just help me with this. I, I need some help. So it was like, I literally had to stop what I'm doing. Cause I was literally on a hamster wheel going mm-hmm. on. What's this relationship at the back to back, back to back. And it was like, I had a low point and I was like, yo, like, what is this? So I decided to hone in and say, yo, let me work on me. Don't worry about nobody else or anything like that. And that's how my coaching came out. So I had to coach myself out of a place of where I was low. So I had to literally, my my business is called Speak Life to Me. Mm. So I had to speak life to myself so I can come up different, change, and evolve and be the best version of myself. Along the way, God has helped me too. Yeah. And it's like I had to really, in that space, I had to really lean on him. Like I really had to. And it was just so great to see the person I am today, what I've become and just helping other people as I go. And it was like the, uh, sometimes your purpose come out of pain. Yeah. Yeah. That's it a definitely fact. come out of pain and it comes out of the, the struggle and everything you've been to at this one point, everything came together. And the crazy thing with the, with the coaching or the business, I've been I already been doing it for so long anyway. And sometimes you don't know that because uh, by trade, I'm a barber. So the whole time I've been speaking to people the whole time, speaking life in them and, yeah. and changing their lives through a haircut. But sometimes it haven't even been times when I, I'm not even, I would say, not even cutting. We just not cutting and just talking. And I'm right. just speaking life in them and talking to them. How you doing? What you been up to? And I've been doing it the whole time, my whole life. And they bring me up to this point. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, that's so true, man. It's amazing how that barbershop talk, that barbershop type is, it's like, it's different. Like you can even go in there I I got my I got my appointment for my cut, mm-hmm. but you know, saying you was arguing with your old lady before you <laughs> left. Yeah, when yeah, you get yeah. there, it's like a breakaway. Mm-hmm. Y'all talking about sports, you can talk about life, maybe some things you can't even say to your wife. But then when you come back home, you got a whole different type of. Right. You don't even have you not even, don't even remember what you was mad about anymore. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You're not as stressed. So you know, uh, speaking life to me is 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 very important, and yeah. Uh, yeah. I can see how they can be beneficial to a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Was there any motivation behind you doing that? Anyone that did you have any mentors or coaches on the way to help you start that up? I would say, um, I like because you know sometimes you can't be in in rooms with people, so sometimes I, I use books. Oh yeah, I use books. I use podcasts like right. to really like because sometimes they they help. You get little nuggets. Here. Shoot, even sermons sometimes help me a For lot sure. too. Like just little nuggets here and there because along your journey along the way. People, things gonna come your way. You just gotta accept it for what it is, like and be in your reality or and be honest with your situation. But also, you have to um, just because I was in a place where I'm used to giving, 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 but I never received or, or, or mm. let people to give to me. Right. So now I, I take it for what it is. Like yo, I, I can receive that now because I've done I've done a lot of work too. But right. when like even with speed life to me, I literally had to. I was in a uh, therapy session. And the guy, he was like, uh, my, my therapist was talking and packing some stuff. 
He was basically like, uh, we're going to pause right now. He said, you, as a little child, you never felt like you, was, you wasn't enough. Right. And then when he hit me with that, I said, mm, that hurt deep. Yeah. Because that little boy never heard you are enough. Right. You never care for it. And sometimes it's men, we don't hear that. So mm-hmm. I haven't heard that in so long. And for him to tell me, I cried in my session. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, mm. so that what really started it because I was like, yo, I'm enough. And every day I told myself, I got to say, I'm enough. Jonathan, you're enough. You are enough. You're enough. And that's what, how everything came into fruition. It was like, yo, you are enough. Cause at the end of the day, you are enough to be the best version of yourself. Right. And you owe it to yourself to be that too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You're everyone is definitely enough. And when we look in the mirror, we got to make sure we're telling ourselves that just like you was telling yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, um, and and also if you're not hearing it, it's not the end all be all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The main thing is you believe it, and then once you believe it, you can be taking steps in life that are differently, mm-hmm. and then you can start hearing more people saying it to you as well. Yeah, because you're moving different. You got a different type of light. You know you got that light. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Everybody, no, it's it's no one out here that doesn't have the light. It's just, are you going to allow it to shine or not? Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, just yeah. like when you were saying, um, you allowed things to be received. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, uh, men can be egotistical. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. cause we all we are literally programmed to just only provide. Yeah. All they say is a man is a provider. A man is a provider. That means that you always giving, 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 yeah. giving. Yeah. When am I going to receive something? Right. Right. And fellas, it's okay to receive. Yes. yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. we don't know it all. No one knows it all. Yes. So we're big. We're more than providers yeah we're more we're more we're not provider and protectors but when this is what i ask people when they say even with women or in general say what is provider and protector what does that look like for you Mm because it's different for everybody because something they they missed along the way as a child so i asked them what does that look like for them Mm -hmm. in the relationship so when protecting and providing it don't always have to be money or physical it can be emotional. Yeah. Communicational. Right. Like these other things that you, you cannot uh, bring to the table uh, that you can't see. You know what I'm saying? Because sure. you can see the money. You can see the me physically taking care of you right. or, or doing things for you when you get sick and stuff like that. But sometimes it's about that mind. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes that emotional support I need in my downtime sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's more important. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, if you if you keep yourself in a good mental space, if mm-hmm. you have someone that can support you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all of those things going to directly imp- and actually impact the output you put into the world, mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. work. You know what I'm saying? How you treat other people. Yeah, yeah. other people. It's it's amazing how many other things it can impact. So um so yeah man, I think you're absolutely right on that. And uh you know even speaking about that, we're wrapping up another year, 2023. <laughs> Out the window on the 2024. Yes. So, you know, what I wanted to ask you, what is one of your biggest mistakes you learned from this year or that epiphany moment where you actually thought to yourself you or, or you finally realized something that you overlooked before? I would say the biggest thing for me was I looked over me. Mm. The reason why I say that is because like we talked about, you give, whether it's in relationship or yourself, it's like I'm so used to giving, not receiving, but I looked over myself to the point that I was willing to um, take myself out for somebody else. Uh. And it's like now I, I I have this authority, I have this power in me now to to change that and be, be who I need to be, my authentic self. And I always say that, like, you can't be... Nobody can beat you at you being you. Right. That's a fact. Nobody can beat you at you being you because you be the best version of you. Now you show up different. And even if you, when you become the best version of yourself, nobody can take that away regardless of what that looks like. So what I had to do was be like, if I said I want to be loving, forgiving, I became loving and forgiving. And now uh, what sometimes when that happens, you, you asking for what you want. So Mm-hmm. God will bring it to you to test you to see do you really want it. Right, right. And then if you when you pass the test, now you become it and then you show up as forgiving and now when the when you have to forgive the person, it's easy now. 
Right, it's right. It's easy. So I tell people just become who you're going to be. And that, that was my biggest lesson. Like, Jonathan, be you. Be authentic. But also love yourself enough. If if anything's the ship not shipping or the um, if the ship is not shipping or this is no longer serving you, it's okay to walk away. Right. It's okay that they 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 might not be in a capacity to love you. They might be in a capacity to to support you, and it's right. okay. Just be you. Keep going. Keep striving for the best. Like it's okay. They might be in a place where. They might not be able to receive what you have, and I always say this: if a person love you, they will. Uh, they will take all of you. Oh, definitely. They definitely. will take all of you, whatever that looks like. They, 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 they're not gonna take bits and pieces of you because I was learning people want to take bits and pieces of me. Right, I'm, I'm not no apple. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, if you only want the bits and pieces to make up this perfect person, mm-hmm. that means you're gonna be with multiple people. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're gonna take bits and pieces from this person, bits and pieces from this person to make that ideal person in your mind. But yeah. neither one is gonna ever be enough for you because you only taking bits and pieces from mm-hmm. each one. Mm-hmm. So if you really want to get to somewhere where you're happy completely with someone, you gotta accept them in totality. Yes. So that sounds um also like you're speaking from experience. Yes. So ha- have you been in a situation where um you felt like, okay, this woman is not taking all of me, so I just need to disconnect. Yes, um, I, the hardest thing was because I, 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 I'm divorced. I was married before, so mm-hmm. that was a hard thing to do to walk away from something that I love so much. Mm-hmm. But and the crazy thing was that when I was in the midst of the situation, I'm like, Lord, help me. How how can I navigate through this? And in the midst of it, what I've noticed that he still dealt with me in the process, but he still saved me. He said, I have to separate you from this to be able to save you. Wow. And I never like, cause literally what I normally do is it's kind of like I have the life jacket on me. I take it off and give it to them. Right. Right. And I can't continue to do that. And now you see it like you seeing the good parts of me, but I can't continue to save you. And I drown every single time. What's some examples of that? Like, can you speak to us? Like, like, are you willing to be vulnerable yeah, and speak yeah, yeah, real yeah, yeah. about it? I'm willing that? to go there. Like, like prime example, I've evolved, changed, and grow. So I've I've talked to uh, my ex. Mm-hmm. I asked her, like, um, we, we in separation and everything. I said, what's going on? How you been? What's up? We, we cool. So I asked her, where are you at now? Mm-hmm. Who, who are you now? That's the question. Who are you? She said, I'm the same person I was when we first met. And you know what I told her? I don't want her. That's the hardest thing I ever had to do. Right. Because you haven't changed. You haven't evolved. You haven't grown into a different person. Not saying I'm better than you. I haven't grown. I want to be in relationship with you, but I don't want to continue on the relationship as the same person. Because if we, if I come back to you, I'm either going to be, I'm going to have to fight two people. The old me and fight you. Mm-hmm. And that's not fair to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's not fair to me. Yeah, for sure. It's not fair. So, like, what's some examples of those times where, okay, you felt like I got to keep, okay, you're drowning. I got, I'm trying to prevent you from drowning, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm drowning now myself. It's, it's no support. It sounded like you didn't feel like you was getting any of the same support that you was providing. No, no. So, it was more of like, once you start to learn it, it I say in relationships, once you learn what you need and want, that's the main thing. What you yeah. need – Need and want to function in a relationship, you you can kind of navigate. So I notice people, especially, you know how people do the affirmations, different things yeah, like yeah. that. So what, you know, is acts of service and, affirm, um, you know, words of encouragement, stuff like that. So I had to figure out what that, what I really needed. So the main thing was hers was, I think hers was acts of service. So I noticed she was projecting after um, her... Af- uh, her affirmations on me or her uh, stuff was on me. And I was like, I, uh-uh, uh-uh. I would kept continuing to do it and I'm drowning myself. And I really needed words of affirmation, but I felt myself giving her what she need and she couldn't give it to me. So mm. I asked her, I said, um, the whole time we've been together, you haven't gave me what I needed. So you're not pointing to my cup at all. Right. What do you think you needed? I needed words of affirmations and quality time. And I was not getting, when I mean by affirmation, I wasn't getting 
I'm appreciated. I'm loved. I'm enough. I'm, I wasn't getting none of that. Because mm, you wasn't even getting that as a child. So, yeah. yo, if you would have heard that from your woman, that would have made you feel like a complete man as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, And 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 for me, me hearing that, that would make me, like, literally want to. And even hearing that through my tough time, tough, tough time, because even in that time, I was going through, like, depression, anxiety, suicide, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. But if she would have stuck with me and said, oh, I, I still see you, even though you low as a now, right now, I still see that king in you. I right. still see that you are enough. I still see that you cared for. I still see. I'm a, After I hear that, I'm like, oh, I, I can run through walls with you because I know you're there for me in my low times, in my, in my down times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true, man. It's like. How ladies, they 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 always say they want, you know, a man that's going to hold them down, you know, mm-hmm. be strong. But, mm-hmm. you know, if once we realize that you can be there during the low times, mm-hmm. too, like, we would do anything in the world for you. Like, yes. I, I don't want a woman that's with me only because I'm high. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, so I already know, like, okay, if something happens where it dips, I'm just going to work myself to death, only focus on this so I can keep you around. And... It's just the wrong type of mentality. I want to work hard regardless. Right. But I also want to know, like, some things in life just happens. You can't even right. control something just happened to you. Mm. Like, will this woman stick around? Probably not. Because all they think about or talk about in this era these days yeah. is yeah. just the man doing everything. And me, I, the man just provide everything. I don't work. I don't got no business working. My money is my money. Mm-hmm. His money is mm-hmm. our money. Yeah. It's yeah. like, how selfish yeah. Is this? Yeah. That's you know not what I'm saying? Fair. That's not even fair. It, it doesn't even make sense. So yeah. in the fellas that, you know, a lot of fellas that are really, really well off, they do that. They'll pay for everything because they know they can right now. Mm-hmm. But like you already, I hope you know, like if you do have a low moment, it's a wrap for you, buddy. Cause you already set yourself up to be, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, uh, but you know, to each his own, I just can't, I, I can't maneuver like that. I feel like I'm fortunate. I got a wife. She works, you know, very hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, we are like, we work on being a power couple. I think if we both doing great, that means our legacy is going to be able to be stronger. But yeah, if it's all yeah. on me, yeah. <clears throat> it's going to be half as strong. Yeah. I mean, automatically. Unless mm-hmm. you're doing something to support. Right. So, uh, you know, that's that's my thoughts on it. Right. And one thing that I did, uh, I think I learned this year when we, you know, back to talking about that is mm-hmm. no matter how much, you know, good deeds that you do, no matter how well your track record is in this in this world. If you make one mistake, yeah, one act of weakness, yeah, that will be com- everything you ever done. You haven't done anything to you know at all. Everything you ever done will be erased in people's eyes yeah. if you make one mistake. Yeah. So uh, you know, one mistake, one act um, on weakness or anything like that. I so everyone, you must move out of strategically never act on impulse yeah never yeah. act on emotion mm-hmm. because you know all your work you ever done can be erased, erased yeah from canceled. one canceled right from one act yeah. from one thing you said wrong yeah to someone everything can be erased so i just tell everyone you know just make sure um you're, you're making moves correctly don't just jump out there off of impulse if you're feeling the type of way you feel emotional about something yeah. don't respond in that moment mm-hmm. wait till you have a little time to digest it yeah and then respond and then actually most of the time a response is not required yeah you know that, what i'm saying and i'm gonna tell you that's the reason why i really got into the coaching space anyway especially dealing with men the reason why because we as men have been uh over time emotional Mm-hmm. So dealing with the emotional space of a man, I get it. Like we're human, um, but that's why it's a lot of men in in the prisons and the jails because of the emotion. They haven't dealt yeah. with a little boy, right? Right. And so, and we were taught to suppress that little yes, boy. Yes, yes, yes. So now he's showing up as a grown man acting out. Right. Yeah. And that and that's the main thing. So my thing with the coaching is like I want to help you hone and be the best version of yourself and be the man you're supposed to be so you can show up different and now people treat you different and you look matter of fact it's not even about the people it's about you seeing yourself different yeah for sure and you That's healing it. that little boy to a point that he still shows up but he shows up in a different manner not right. angry not mad not upset not 
um, you still have the emotion. That's that's okay to have that, but right. you don't have to be in a place where now you got to go pull a gun out on somebody. <laughs> you got to go be abusive. No, right. we're, we're not talking. That, that's not cool. It's, it's already enough of us in there anyway. Yeah, so we got we need to, we got to change that narrative. We got to deal with the emotional part of the sex. I've really had to do some work on the little boy inside me. Um, right. He used to cry a lot. He used to be mad. He used to be angry yep. due to stuff that happened in you know childhood and and different things and trying right. stuff, but. Now I I got I I love him now. Yeah. I accept him for him now. I literally had to be in a place to like really I, I do this now. I'll I I I I get in the mirror and I clap and say, come on, let's go. Right. Let's go. You got this today. Yeah. You're gonna do this today. And then I'll hug him and say, It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Be your own hype man. Yeah, you got to. You gotta be your you own hype man, to. bro. I literally hype myself up for so many different things. You got to. I know to. my old lady be looking at me like I'm crazy sometimes. <laughs> but yo, I be really hyping myself up. I like um like even like I was telling people like, yo, before each interview mm-hmm. that I have for something, I go to my thug motivation, throw on my Jeezy <laughs> tracks, you know what I'm saying? I be I be literally in a shirt and tie, listening to my Jeezy before my interview. <laughs> It's like just getting hype, you know what I'm saying? Telling right. myself what I can do. I'm motivated. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, a lot of time I look in the mirror, just like you were saying, like, and tell myself, like, yo, you can do this. Like, yo, you the best that ever done it. Yeah. You can do this. You better yes. realize your power. You yeah. that one. You yeah. that nigga. Yeah. Like, all that stuff. So, um. You got to be your own hype, man. Yeah, for you gotta sure. got to be your own hype, man. For sure. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going I'm to switch gears on with you real quick. Mm-hmm. Tell me what's worse. It's totally we switching completely gears. Okay. Tell me what's worse. <laughs> exactly. Skirt, skirt. <laughs> exactly. Skirt, skirt. <laughs> what is worse? You growing up with a mother that everyone in your town, city, state, mm-hmm. know is a thought. <laughs> or <laughs> you're raising a daughter that everyone in the city, town, and state know is a thought. I'm going. I'm, I'm gonna let my mom have this one. <laughs> <laughs> she she too old and grown for this one. My daughter died. I'm talking about you growing up too as a kid. You growing up as a kid. All the boys in the school in high school know your mom is a thought. That they can head out. It, 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 <laughs> it, 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 what it is, Ma, I love you. <laughs> but hey, hey. She might be in the cougar stage. Hey, it is what it is. Right, right. <laughs> My daughter, ooh, ooh. I'm telling you that, like, people don't realize, like, yo, literally having a daughter that yeah. is a thought is a man's worst nightmare. Yeah. Like, you talk, like, you love your mama to death, <laughs> but I will accept that. Yes. But I didn't have nothing to do with raising a <laughs> <Yeah>. thought. <laughs> Look, she probably I, already had it in her anyway. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like when it comes to your mama, you yeah, can say she that. Probably had it in her. Like, yo, I, don't, I, don't, I ain't raised my mama. <laughs> <laughs> she just birthed me. I'm right, glad yeah, I'm she here. She just birthed me, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, like, yo, having yeah. a daughter that's yeah. like that is, woo. Yeah, it, yeah, they hit something. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, yeah. It's like, so that's why we, like, 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 even like a child, like when a child sees his, man, it's just so, it just goes so deep. And, uh, that's why we look at women in a certain like t- type of way. So yeah. I want to, my my wife and my um, well not my wife, but I want my daughter to when she's growing up to always understand her value. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying. But anything on earth, diamonds, uh, art, mm-hmm. the ones that are the most valuable is the ones that are less accessible. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, the yeah. less accessible something is the more value it yeah. has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's with anything. Yeah. Subscribe now for part two. The Highest Point Podcast. More than a pod, it's a lifestyle. lifestyle, lifestyle.